I think it's safe to say that anyone that's into distilled spirits will know that Scotland is known for scotch. Or more specifically, single malt. But did you know that Scotland has another national drink? How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Yes, you did hear me correctly in the intro. Scotland has a second national drink. And here's the thing. If you're not from Scotland, you've probably never heard of it. But within Scotland, it's kind of a big deal. Of course, I'm talking about the soft drink that'll get you through. Iron Brew. Here's the problem, guys. This is a channel all about distillation. And this is not a distilled beverage. But what if it was? <laughs> what would happen if we distilled iron brew? There's a few different ways that we could theoretically go about this. We could take iron brew and just distill it. So we would hopefully get some of the essence of iron brew coming across, but it wouldn't be a distilled beverage. That's kind of lame. Or another way to do it would be to take the iron brew and use that to flavor a different spirit. So almost in the same way that you take uh, botanicals and flavor a neutral spirit or a vodka to turn it into gin, we could take iron brew and flavor a different spirit that I've already created. Ah, that could work. <sighs> or, or we could take the sugars in this stuff and actually ferment it and then distill it. So essentially what I'm talking about doing is throwing some yeast into iron brew, letting the yeast run wild, take the sugar, convert it into alcohol, uh, and then we distill that and see what happens. So that's what I decided to do. <laughs> Here's the thing though, guys. I had distilled soda once before with the guys uh, over at the Modern Road. We did Dr. Pepper. That was great fun. But like I said earlier on, I wanted to actually make alcohol out of iron brew and then distill it. I decided to test it. I took a small amount of iron brew, threw some brewing yeast into it, and waited to see if it would distill. Actually, after about three weeks, the stuff had gone completely nasty. So I tried again, but this time with Hornendale, and that worked perfectly. It fermented out dry in about three and a half days. That was all the confirmation bias I needed to uh, know that it would work perfectly. I took 40 cans of iron brew, threw it into a fermenter, pitched the Hornendale yeast, and three days later, it had fermented precisely Nothing, it didn't work at all. So I did the only thing I could think of at that point in time, put some more yeast, and that time it did work, luckily. <laughs> by the way guys, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. More on that in a little bit. But with the iron brew fermenting away, I had that monkey off my back and I had time to look into why this stuff is so freaking popular in Scotland. And honestly, I think it comes down to really good marketing. Really, really good marketing, like this. So. What are we gonna call her? Fanny. I want to call her Fanny. We can't call her Fanny. <laughs> Fanny. I like it. It's unusual, unique. My mum's a Fanny. Granny was a Fanny. She'll be joining a long line of Fannies. But I'm no Scotsman. I'm just some hairy Kiwi on the other side of the planet. So I decided to track this guy down and see what this guy had to say about it. Ian, thanks a bunch for doing this, dude. Uh, I need someone to help me decipher why Iron Brew is such a big thing. It is one of those things that has become part of the Scottish psyche. And and the bulk of that is, is down to the company that created it, AJ Bar. They're very, very good at marketing and have been since all the way back in just before the 1900s. And it's, it's culminated with it being one of those things where it's, Scotland is one of the few countries in the world where Coca-Cola is not the top selling drink in uh, soft drink. It's Iron Brew. The core of the advertising seems to be this piss take irreverent. And that's the reason I'm talking to you, right? Like you, you were literally a part of that. It got to the point where people were leaning out of van windows to shout Fanny at me in the street. And you were, you were saying that they, they still run the ad. So every so often I still get an email uh, from my, my old agent saying just a wee heads up, we're going to be giving you some more money. And it will say in the email, um, Fanny usage. <laughs> so the, the other thing that 
thing that's really interesting to me is this idea that it's sold as Scotland's other national drink. Part of that probably stems from during the sort of temperance movement, when they were trying to get Scottish men off the demon drink, Salvation Army in particular, I believe, used to recommend that they drink iron brew. So there is something really quite wonderful that you have distilled this into a spirit um, because it's Scotland's other national drink <laughs> now as Scotland's national drink. <laughs> we appreciate it, mate. This isn't the Smuts channel. Let's stop talking about fannies and all of that ridiculous stuff. Rise above it, people. Uh, instead, let's talk about your huevos. Is there, a, is there something here that you find less attractive? <laughs> the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped, can help you keep your shells shiny, guys. I've been using the Manscaped Performance Package for quite a while now, and I gotta tell you guys, the, uh, the ball toner and the ball deodorant, those are great, as is the nose and ear trimmer, but they're not the star of the show. Let's talk about the star of the show, which is the Weed Whacker. I've been using the thing for a beard trimmer ever since I got it. Yes, I do actually trim some things, <laughs> but that's not what it's for. It's for keeping you slick down, it's for, it keeps you junk tame, okay? The skin safe design and the ceramic blades make sure that there's drastically less cuts going on uh, on soft skin. And I have to say, guys, I'm pretty happy to, to throw it around fairly wildly on, uh, on gentle parts of the body. So use the code STILLIT at manscaped.com to save 20% and get free international shipping. That's pretty sweet. Your balls will thank me later. Now, back to something serious, like distilling iron brew. <laughs> so. At this point in time, the iron brew brew was all fermented out, but there was a slight problem. The ABV, or the amount of alcohol in the wash, was really, really low. Let me explain. For reference, when you're making a single malt, the ABV range, generally an average range is kind of between eight and 10%. Now these things are generally made with pot distillation. Generally double or maybe triple distilled depending on the whiskey you're talking about and where it's from, so on and so forth. But here's the thing guys, uh, pot distillation by itself can only raise the ABV so much. It is affected by the starting ABV, and a difference between 2.5% and 8-10% to 10 is kind of big. <laughs> because I had so little of the Iron Brew brew, I wasn't really going to be able to double or triple distill it. So for that reason, and because of these restrictions, I decided to distill it with four plates. I'm going to let past Jesse explain that to you at the time that I was actually running the still. Down here in the pot, we have the Iron Brew brew that's being heated up and vaporized. That vapor is being forced up through the column and it hits this here, which is a reflux condenser. Uh, this is a jacketed condenser, the vapor that goes through the middle of it and there's cold water running around the outside, which condenses that vapor and sends it back down through the column. As it hits each of these plates, it's forced to interact with the vapor that's going back up through the column. So the liquid uh, and the vapor bubble through each other. And the general idea is that the heavier compounds in the vapor get stripped out and dragged back down through the still, and the lighter compounds in the liquid get pulled out and forced up through the still. So you can kind of think of it like four distillations. One distillation in the pot, one here, here, and here. Thanks for that pass, Jesse. But uh, a couple of tips, mate. Maybe uh, learn how to point a camera at something that you're recording properly. That'd be good. And uh, grow a beard properly too, eh? What Jesse did do correctly though, however, was finish off that distillation, fractioning everything out into individual jars so I could assess them and decide what I wanted to keep, what I didn't want to keep. If it was nasty, too headsy, alcoholic, and uh, paint thinner like, it got chucked out. If it was tailsy and horrible and wet dog and cardboard at the end of the run, it got chucked out, and I ended up with a very small amount of alcohol that I actually kept, which was then proofed down to 50% for tasting. And while I am enjoying the Iron Brew, it's not something that I've grown up with or, you know, have a great detail of knowledge about. So, I thought, uh, who better to ask to help me taste this stuff and tell me if it tastes like it should, whether it actually tastes like Iron Brew, and help you guys understand what's going on in the spirit, then Roy from Aqua Vitae. Roy, thanks a bunch for doing this, man. Uh, You're you, very did welcome. You, did you finally receive your wee sample? 
I have my precious uh, distilled <laughs> iron brew right in front of me, Jesse. I have it here. It should probably be in a glass. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. Um, so what do you think? Sometimes you can put your nose in a whiskey and you kind of, it's quite flat and calm and it, it doesn't really give mm. you much. It's quite tight. And I was a wee bit worried that that's what we would be dealing with here, but it's absolutely the opposite. <laughs> Can I be honest? Um, of course, that's what we've got you here for. It's, it's not all, not all of it is appealing. <laughs> so let's start at the top. Initially, it's all about that kind of floral, uh, potpourri, slightly soapy. <laughs> um, it, it's inviting. I don't know if it's inviting on a spirit, but it's a nice smell. Um, there's there is some kind of warming spice there, but it's all about that pink sugar this is this is a very sugary thing and the yeah. overwhelming uh, aroma for me just takes me right back to being seven years old and bazooka joe pink bubble gum to the point <laughs> i can even pick up the icing sugar or the the, the 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 powdered sugar that used to be around these these bubble gums if you think of it like a distilled spirit it's very very strange if you just kind of throw all that out and try to not think of it like any other spirit it's less weird to me somehow it's kind of like a really high powered amped up liqueur hmm. or maybe a little bit like um you could or if there was a kind of if there was a bit of kind of uh, juniper or something in here this would be very very gin like to me like a like a high strength gin should we uh should we have a drink yeah absolutely cheers man cheers Super sweet, pink. Everything is pink. Sweet sugar. I'm just thinking confectionery, confectionery. The kind of floral thing is in the background. It's not forward. It's, it's all confectionery. Hot cinnamon. You know, like the hot gobstoppers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of mid palette. Is that spice and the heat, and then it moves very quickly to that minerally chalky, uh, almost like like I say, like dissolved. Aspirin, desperin, paracetamol. Wow. There's something interesting going on for me with the the alcohol heat and cinnamon and ginger. Whatever fruitiness, sugariness, or flavorings have been in the original drink are working with the alcohol quite well to, to give a flavor experience here. And I mean, it's the finish on it is incredibly long. I'm not suggesting it's a wonderful finish. It's very, <laughs> but but it, it's, it hangs around for a long time. There's one more thing that I want to do in this video before I get going, which is I feel like it's just, I mean, I have to mix these, right? <laughs> I feel like I have to. I got to. So I, I, I love you, Roy. Well, I tell you what I'll do. Um, if you join me then on the live stream, if you join me on a VPUB, yes, I'll get I'll some iron through and I'll keep this to have another drink like we've had tonight and then i'll get some iron brew and i'll mix it thanks a bunch roy i appreciate it mate for those of you out there that want to know what that uh, iron brew distillate plus iron brew itself cocktail mixer tastes like uh the vpub with roy is actually going to be tomorrow in terms of when you guys get to see this video the very next day so link in the description down below to find roy's channel and check us out on that vpub ian's going to be joining us too i do believe Anyway guys, uh, before I give you my fi final thoughts on all of this, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much guys, and I am so very sorry that it took this long <laughs> to get this video out. Uh, I know you guys helped me out with decisions and what I should do like almost a year ago when I was first working on this, uh, and I'm sorry it didn't come out sooner. Uh, COVID post screwed us basically. Anyway, so my final thoughts are yes. This distillate does taste like I am brewed. No, it's not great or amazing or something wonderful worth, you know, being a, a, a product or really even creating again in and of itself the way it is now. But, but with a little bit of tinkering and, um, you know, potentially getting hold of some iron brew concentrate or something like that, I don't know, could be something kind of cool. <laughs> In any case, guys, uh, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, you know all the things that you need to do. Do the YouTube things, like, subscribe, comment, share. You get it. 
I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.